In this video, I'm going to be reacting to some music battle stations. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. At the time of making this video, I am planning to rebuild my music battle station, which you can see back there. I'm planning to do that next week. It's quite a lot of effort to do that, reinstall everything, get it up and running again for production. So I'm making this rather easy video to make in advance. I'll be releasing it next week. What I'm gonna be doing is reacting to some music setups or some recording setups. And I'm doing that by going to Reddit and looking at a subreddit. Now, if you are not familiar with Reddit, um, a subreddit is a kind of like a group or a page on Reddit. And I'm going to be reacting to a subreddit called Music Battle Stations, where people show pictures of their studios. And it's just going to be interesting to see what gear people have, the way they have things organized. And I'm going to give my suggestions where it's appropriate um, of ways in which they could improve their setups. Let's get stuck in and look at some Music Battle Stations. <laughs> So I'm not going to be looking at every single post on here. I'm just going to be scrolling through until something catches my attention. So starting at the top, we'll just scroll down here. And well, let's start off with this one. Station of Battles. Okay, we'll go in here, get it up to full screen. What have we got? Well, this is a nice, neat little setup, isn't it? Well, I say neat. Hang on. Look at those cables. Oh my goodness. This is... <laughs> This I've heard about this, but I haven't experienced it because I do have a, a MacBook Pro, but it's a much older one. This is the modern approach to the MacBook Pro. Don't put hardly any ports on it, and then the user has to extend it. And that's what they've had to do here. Look at that. Well, I'm going to call it what it is. It's a mess of cables there, both sides there. Uh, yeah, just sorry. Just put more ports on the device, please. Um, oh, I've got a bit of cable stuff happening on there let's stop going on about cables and look at the studio so we've got some interesting gear here so we've got double monitors if you don't have a dual monitor set up then definitely think about spending some money there that is going to improve your workflow enormously you'll hear me go on about that quite a lot actually some m audio monitors i haven't used them. maybe years ago i used them um, but good sort of uh, budget monitors is what i hear from there we've got some audio technica headphones there which are very popular even though i don't have any myself let's have a look at the audio interface uh oh here we are we've got it down here this is um the roland octa octa capture i haven't used this but um, in my recent show uh, with featured artists, one of my favorite artists on there, I think was called Brad Peterson, if I remember correctly. Um, he was using one of these and he was getting a great sound from his little studio. So um, I'd love to try these. I believe, though, that you can get great results from them. Um, let's just look over here. This kind of interests me. There we go. A Roland Juno 60. I've only got emulations of this or an emulation of it from Arturia in in one of the uh the v collection i think it's called um which i love by the way um but to have a real one must be really awesome these are not cheap this is a 1980s synthesizer sort of mid 80s and um, you'd be lucky to pick one up for around about four thousand us dollars something like that i don't know what this is over here if we look just at the bottom here does anybody recognize what that is? Let me know in the comments down below if you do. I think it may be some sort of mic reflector, something like that. You know, those um, reflection things, maybe a homemade one. Maybe I'm insulting some company's effort at design. Looks a bit homemade to me, but yeah. If you recognize that one, can you let me know what it is? I'm quite intrigued. It looks a little bit small, but uh, photographs can be deceiving. Yeah, I think that's a neat little setup there. Nice bright room. Um, no room treatment at all, I noticed. Um, that's going to be something you'll hear me talk about a lot as well. But anyway, you know, not bad at all. Let's move on from there. Let's go back to music battle stations and scroll down. What's this? Uh, worth $5,000. Is it worth $5,000? Well, it's, there's a old, couple of old tape machines in there. So probably is to someone i don't know let's move on from there oh my goodness look at all these screens hey this is somebody who 
really enjoys their um, workflow, productivity from workflow here. It's actually a neat little setup. I'm not sure, I can't count, but is this an 88 key keyboard, something along those lines. So full-size keyboard there in just the right place, in my opinion. Um, looks like it's got some hammer action keys on there as well, which I personally prefer. Not everybody does, um, but yeah, they're great. Um, we've got, I've, I've never used one of these keyboards. I guess they're supposed to be super um, ergonomic or something like that. Great for your hands. There's a trackball there. Do, do you use trackball? Um, I thought about it. I mean, if, if you're in a small space, then I guess it's really, really good. Maybe a backup mouse <laughs> happening there. I'm not sure. Um, moving over here. Fader Master. Now this, I've seen this before. Um, it's by a company called, what are they called? Uh, JL Cooper or something like that, JLC, JL Cooper. Um, it's not like a, I don't think it's like a door controller. I think this is a MIDI controller, okay? Um, in, in other words, you know, it works through MIDI and it's going to be sending like CC and messages and things like that. I don't think these buttons are actually transport controls or anything like that. So um, this could actually be quite a useful device. I'm not sure if, uh, how old it is. It, oh, we can see that MIDI automation controller. I don't know that much about it, but definitely I'm going to put a link for that in the description um, because it may be the sort of thing that some of you MIDI enthusiasts, if that's such a thing, would be interested. I don't know what this controller is over here. Maybe this is transport control. Oh, I'm asking you guys for a lot of information today. Do you know what that one is? Mm, not really sure. But you know, um the screens look at these screens look if you want to have more than one screen then why not have four you could put your door right in the middle there you could perhaps have your console off to the side there some plugins over here some more plugins up here or maybe just your operating system or maybe if you were working with other artists this could be for a video feed to um one of the live rooms or something like that um yeah not sure but look I'm sure they love it, and I'm sure it's very, very useful. Oh, my goodness. So this is very interesting, actually. These are some Adam Audio um, Studio monitors, the S3As. I've never heard these. I do have some Adam Audio monitors myself, so I would love to check them out. Adam, if you're watching, or Federal Audio here in Australia, if you're watching. Um, but <laughs> I fear that they're not just going to send them to me because these um, monitors... Um, in Australian dollars, I think they cost around about $9,000. They're going to be something like 7000 or something like that. Several thousands of dollars anyway. So we've got some really serious um, monitors there. And that's really interesting because look over here. We've just got bare walls. Yeah. So this person has got this set up. They're definitely focused on workflow. Love that. Um, and then they've definitely focused on sound quality. The position of the speakers is great. They're on stands. They look as though they may be forming the equilateral triangle, which is where you try and make an equilateral triangle between your ears in your sitting position and where the monitors are. So they're set up perfectly on those stands there, but no room treatment. That that seems odd to me. I think I'd sort of rather buy $4,000 monitors and spend, you know, $3,000 on room treatment. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but uh, that's what I think anyway. But yeah, it's a neat little setup that I like it. Let's go back. Well, by the way, if you're finding this video enjoyable, please go ahead and hit the like button for me. Do it right away so that you don't forget. And if you do like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified about my other videos. Now, back to more Battle Stations. Oh, this is a, a cute, again, multi-monitor setup here. Um, I, I've said before, do you like this above configuration so the monitors are not side by side? Uh, do you, any of you try that out? Um, how do you think that is better than having the monitors side by side? I'm not sure. Um, this is a neat little setup um, as a very basic setup, okay? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, they've got their audio interface over here. So Scarlett 2i2, um, supposedly the biggest selling audio interface on the planet. And yeah, I probably believe them with that. I find this interface good. Um, it's not feature packed or anything like that, but it gets the job done and it's got a certain quality to it, um, which, you know, make sure it's, you're going to deliver a certain quality that you'll want. Uh, some Yamaha monitors there. Well, they are uh, probably HS8s, I'm guessing, by the look of it here. The only thing I'll say about this setup, 
um, is the monitors are very close together, yeah? So talking about that equilateral triangle again, um, yeah, if, if from what I can see, you want you definitely want to have these further apart than they are at the moment. So you'll probably improve your mixes just by doing that. But yeah, that's a nice little um, kind of almost everything you need kind of set up. Okay, let's move on from here. Oops, sorry, going through to this page. Yes, that's the one. Okay, so move it. Oh, didn't have to go far before we found something interesting. Yes, I'm interested in this bit, and you'll see why in a moment. But let's just go through the basics. Um, nice guitar over there, probably an ovation or something like that, left-hander. Um, we have a keyboard, which we saw on a similar show I did to this, where I looked at cakewalk uh, setups. Um, this is a, I think it's called the um, MK MPK MIDI from Akai, something along those lines anyway. Seems to be quite popular. I see it around in a few different studios. I'm not sure what the interface is there. It looks like a fairly basic one. It's just got one XLR jack there, maybe and a high Z input there. But anyway, uh, regardless, a fairly simple, straightforward interface. That's fine. Um, KRK Rocket 6 is here. So I've owned KRK before. Um, I don't like them as much as my Adam Audio monitors, but these are decent monitors and uh, they're kind of not ever so budget, but kind of budget monitors. The latest generation of these, which I think is the fourth generation, if I'm not mistaken, I am told are really very, very good compared to previous um, generations. Anyway, um, nicely these are on stands okay so um i think that's important not to have monitors like this sitting on a desk like this and talking about the desk it really is just a desk probably an old school desk or something someone's painted it on on the bits that you can see but not on the bits you can't see so done on a budget there that's fine because i think that this person has spent their money in just the right places a decent instrument now we can't see what microphone they've got um, but i assume off screen here there's going to be some sort of microphone they've got a keyboard which is a good enough to uh, to make it much better than using an on-screen keyboard or something like that so that's good they've probably maybe overspent on the monitor they've got a curved monitor there we probably don't really need that for a monitor of this size but um, that's fine um, and they've got their studio monitors um, up and running there they've got them on stands but most importantly what they've done is they've got some room treatment there. They have some broadband absorbers by the look of it, which are so much better than using foam tiles. Um, if you make that transition from foam tiles to broadband um, absorbers, you will go, oh, wow, how did I manage without this? Um, some sort of base traps in the middle there. I'm not sure if it's just a regular absorber just put in the corner. Um, it's not a bad start, but it's nice if you've got something um, with some depth to it. But the point is, is that they've spent their money wisely on the right kind of things, in my opinion, for a basic setup. You can make an awful lot of good music in this space, in my opinion. So um, well done to them, whoever they are. So moving on from there, I don't know how much we're going, how we're going for time. Oh, we're fine, we've got lots of time here. Um, scrolling down, down, oh, look at that one. Oh, I don't know anything about tape machines, so I won't, I won't go in there. Uh, this one, oh, the, my new mastering room. Look at that. Whoa. Give it a moment. High res photo. Wow, that looks so nice, doesn't it? Hey, just aesthetically here, very, very nice. Um, I don't know anything about these uh, monitor speakers or anything like that at all. But it's interesting they call it the, the sort of mastering studio this is what you pay the money for partly when you pay for a mastering engineer a room that was specifically designed for mastering monitors i'm talking about speaker type monitors that are specifically designed for mastering and usually going to be some outboard gear which is designed for it and then of course the skills of the person who has yeah probably learned about all kinds of audio things but has decided to focus on the art of mastering how much better is it this is often asked if you go to a mastering engineer um, and and get it done properly by an expert um you probably pay a lot more money to uh, squeeze i don't know five or ten percent better quality out of your masters and that 
could well be worth it to you if you're releasing to a large uh, audience and it's going to make a difference to you. So, yeah. But what a beautiful room, just all in all. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, moving on from there, let's go to our next one. Um, oh, haven't had to go far again. Let's go and take a look at this one. This has got something really uh, typical that I see in studios in it. We'll get, we'll get onto that in a moment, but let's just go through the basics. Um, looks like they've got some sort of gaming piece uh, laptop there, which is often a good choice if you're thinking about what kind of um, PC or laptop to go for if you're going to buy one off the shelf, because um, they're sort of... They're usually overpowered. Gaming laptops generally have faster processors and um, more memory, that kind of thing. So um, it's good rule of thumb to look at uh, gaming laptops and desktops. Now, moving on from there, excuse me, what we have is some EVE audio. What are they? Um, the SC205s. I believe I reviewed these ones on the channel. If it wasn't the next model up, no, I'm pretty sure it was these ones. And I really did enjoy them. A nice, compact, high-quality um, home studio monitor. And I love the fact that they've got the controls on the front, which is a bit of a bugbear for some other monitors for me. So they've got that and that. They're using the Audion ID uh, 14 there um, for their audio interface. I've reviewed that recently as well. Um, very, very impressive as an audio interface. And I have one down by my knee somewhere here, and I still continue to use it in my productions. Um, and also some bad dynamic, probably uh, by the looks of it, DT770 headphones, which are a fantastic solid headphone. If you, if you just can't make up your mind what headphones to buy and you've got budget for those, get those. You definitely won't be disappointed pointed be careful which ohms you get because um, if you get the wrong ones then you may not find that they're all that loud with certain audio interfaces now the thing i wanted to talk about was this um we're always going to talk about this but foam tiles on the wall in so many different places i mean i can't see the whole room so i don't know how strategic they've been placed but as i've said i prefer broadband absorbers over foam tiles they do a lot more for you if but, you know, if you've got some available to you, maybe you've got some, you bought some cheap off eBay, what have you, you just need a quick solution. Um, fine, you know, make do with them. I'm not going to say you shouldn't get them. You could get just as good a result potentially from things on the walls. I think like, I don't know, curtains or bookshelves and things like that. That's something to bear in mind. But hey, you may like the look of them, what have you. But there's there's nothing really being gained in the corner over here. These are not serving as any kind of um base trap for for the the low end that gets um built up in the corner of a room they're not really doing anything in terms of that so that's my opinion anyway and down here what have we got an uh, akai mpk <laughs> midi mini sorry with black keys looks nice that doesn't it just a very popular little keyboard i think i might have to get one for the channel and do a review on it at this rate so yeah moving on from there nice little setup though uh, enjoyable place to go and make music, I think. If we okay, what have we got here? No, we'll go past that one. Move down. Oh, look, there's a little hamster there. Hello, my friend. Moving down from there, I'm just going to keep going until I find something which is really super duper. <laughs> okay, uh, note to self don't get drunk and take pictures of your studio before you send them to the internet. Okay, yep nice shoes okay moving on now from there scrolling through let's have a look at this one here this looks very homely doesn't it um oh there's a lot of interesting things about this one actually let's start off with the big screen uh, monitor there do you use one in your studio i've seen lots of people use them um i would think you'd be better off to have it like mounted on the wall uh, is it mounted on the wall no it's not it's on a it's on a stand i I just feel like, wow, that's really in your face um, right there. And if the resolution is not great, then I don't Anyway, I would prefer to see that on the wall. That's up to them. Um, but yeah, if you use one, let me know in the comments down below. Another monitor off to the side here. Not sure if, if this is all being run off of this uh, laptop over here. It probably is. So they've got three screens all in all. It's great. What I like about this is the way they've been economical with the space here. So 
you can see they've grabbed some sort of stand here which hooks onto the side of the desk so that you can put your uh, laptop on there i love that um great use of space uh looks like this is the uh what do they call this the steinberg is it the ur 22c not sure my mate pete johns over at studio life today uses these i haven't tried them but he swears by them reckons they're really really good and if he says that I believe him. Um, looking over here, we've got a uh, Personas Atom here. I've got the Atom SQ, which I absolutely love. Um, but also, I've heard people just love this smaller version of it there. That's an interesting little stand. They've got that on there as well, isn't it? Look, if you know what that stand is, could you let me know? Because I think I could make use of a stand like that. If you're good at Googling and you can find a link for me on Amazon or eBay or what have you. Yeah, let me know. Um, looks like this is this part is built into the desk, isn't it? This this bit here. And so, yeah, great use of space there. Uh, little SM57 there. If you're going to get one dynamic microphone for your studio, then I would definitely go a short SM57. And the keyboard here is a native instrument. It's a little one of their smaller uh, complete keyboards um i haven't used them much apart from in music stores um but they are a great keyboard by all accounts in your case um but the one thing i notice about this although this is a great setup and people this person has put a lot of sort of effort into their basic setup here i've got to say the monitoring in terms of the speakers is is really quite bad i'm i don't recognize this uh speaker up here but the position of it is not good okay um first of all there's virtually no stereo image there and way up above you sort of looking down i don't find is a, is really great you want to try and get your monitors at near enough to ear level if you can and of course you want to create a stereo image with that triangle i spoke about earlier and the problem with this setup with these uh, monitor screens and the computer there is where are you going to put monitors when you buy them um yeah so that's a bit of an issue with that one but other than that uh neat little place to sit and make music let's go through and do one or two more here um yeah let's have a look at this one here this is it's such a lovely sort of bright space to be in this isn't it i mean i'm in a very dark studio as you can see and i kind of like that for various reasons but I also get that it's really lovely to have, you know, actual daylight streaming into a workspace. It does something for your brain, makes you really creative, I reckon, at times. Um, this is a guitarist studio primarily by the looks of it, although there's uh, some sort of decent keyboard going on here, but we've got a Fender uh, jazz bass going there. We've got a Gibson SG and a Gibson Flying V there. Um, that, together with an orange amp setup, I'm guessing there's some sort of old-style rock game going on there that's what you would have all that gear for um some more 70s 80s style rock there and i don't mind a bit of that myself moving over to where the music is mixed not quite sure what the interface is there but some nice little yamaha monitors there i think they're going to be the five inch version of their powered monitors um which you could i think you could go a bit bigger than that in a space like this maybe up to the seven inch version but hey I think five is absolutely fine as well. In fact, don't get rid of them. Maybe just back it up with a subwoofer at some point in the future. The big problem with this setup at the moment, it does look delightful, but what I spy is bare walls, of course, a window, which is a very reflective surface. And also down here, we've got tiles, room tiles, uh, sorry, floor tiles. So. I imagine the acoustics in this room could be pretty bad at times. Um, so, yeah, shut the curtains, get longer, thicker ones would be something I would do there and get some sort of room treatment um, of, of some kind. You don't need like loads, maybe one, two, three panels down this side, a couple of bass traps in the corner. Um, you can actually make them very well yourself. I'm going to put a link in the description to a video by my mate uh, Dan from the Lonely Rocker uh, channel, and he's got um, some great videos about DIY room treatment. Okay, have we got time for one more? I think we have. Let's do one more. Oh, is that another APA, uh, MPK MIDI there with black keys? Such a popular keyboard. What actually is what's going on with this one? We won't count this one. I just haven't gave a quick look. 
Oh, I see. So they they're using um, Logic on a MacBook here, and they're using an iPad as a sort of a remote control. If you don't use any kind of door remote, I've got uh, two, I've got one on my iPad, which I use to control Studio One, which is fantastic. And I also control Cakewalk with one on my Android phone, something called Touch Door. If you don't have one, then just, you've almost certainly got a device which could, um, which you could download an app for give it a try because you can't always be right next to your computer when you're recording especially guitarists and drummers especially you want to get away from your computer and it's just great to have a, a free app most likely which will control your door check it out um, let's move on from there whoops excuse me and moving on to our last one no not that one. Oh, not that one I mean, oh, I want to do this one. Oh, I want to do this one. Which one's it going to be? This one or this uh, or this one? Hang on. Let me just check down here. Okay, let's go back up to the purple one. The lights or the pink one. The lights, they drew me in. I'm sorry. I'm just a sucker for it. <laughs> I think I've said it before. But I just reckon that the right kind of lighting in a room can get you in the mood. It can make you feel really creative. I'm sticking by it. That's why we need RGB in our studios, or at least some just tasteful lighting. Anyway, uh, moving on again, we see the ever popular rocket speakers there. I spoke about those earlier. I think they're the five inch versions. Um, as I say, I think these may be generation three. I think generation four are the much better ones, the newer ones. Look out for those. And again, I think this may be, correct me if I'm wrong, that Steinberg interface we we're looking at earlier. Some bad dynamic. Um, either dt 770s or 990s or 880s one of those these are great headphones um, definitely get hold of those if you're looking for some headphones i don't really understand why people use pa monitor speakers in their studios i mean first of all they take up a lot of space i'm just not sure they've got the right sort of um uh, what can i say sonic qualities for mixing or anything like that do you use them in your studio let me know i mean why why would you use them maybe i'm missing something here but what they are using um and it kind of catches my attention here i know lots of people who watch my channel use pcs there's a lot of cakewalk users there um but i will mention they're using a mac mini here now i don't know if it's the new mac mini but that's what i want to talk about i've known a couple of people maybe three good friends of mine who have gone to the mac mini since the m1 chip came out that new processor from apple and by all accounts, even if you go for a fairly basic version, so with only um, eight gigs of memory, uh, a fairly small hard drive, these things are lightning fast, really, really efficient, really good to use. I mean, you're in that Apple ecosystem. I guess you could install Windows on there. I haven't seen anything about that. Not sure what it would be like with drivers and things. Uh, don't go down that rabbit hole, maybe. But yeah, if you're thinking about going down the Apple route and you want to keep things um, fairly modest in terms of budget, I do hear that these are very, very good. And I look at bench tests and things like that for processors, and they're right up there with some of the most expensive um, Intel and AMD processors. Good value for money, um, those little units there. So yeah, that's where I think I'm going to leave it today. <laughs> with a Mac Mini. Do you own any of the gear that we've seen in today's video? Let me know in the comments down below if you do and what your experience has been with it. I would love to hear from you guys on that. And let me know also, what was your favorite studio that you've seen in today's reaction video? I'd love to hear about that as well. Now check the link in the description down below for the Music Battle Station subreddit if you just are not satisfied and you wanna see more studios. You can go there and scroll down and scroll through until you're heart's content also check the link in the description down below for my patreon dot page where for as little as one dollar per month you can help me help you by making more videos just like this thanks so much for joining me today and please join me in the next video